This conference will now be recorded. Okay, here's the agenda for today's session. We are going to start about the concept, very important concept with respect to the DevOps is Docker and containers. So here, in our previous session, we also discussed about this CACD tool, Jenkins. Okay, in Jenkins, uh, we have covered almost 90% uh, of curricula. The only thing that it is uh, left out is Jenkins uh, scripting, script pipelining. Okay, so here, uh, the entire CACD process that we discussed, okay, so it will be uh, once again uh, recap by using a concept called Groovy script. Using this uh, Groovy script, we will be dealing with the entire CACD process, okay? That alone has been left out. So here, this can be covered in the forthcoming week, okay? In a Sunday session of the next week. So because before that, if we have idea on Docker, we can make use of this Docker container to launch Jenkins and to execute this Groovy script on top of it, okay? So that is the reason why I am skipping this Jenkins script pipelining concept and moving back to Docker. Here, this Docker and container will need roughly about 12 to 14 hours of our session. Okay, it is very, very, very important. With respect to this DevOps engineer has been concerned, the Docker container and another thing, Kubernetes, that we are going to discuss. These are all the very important topics that you need to aware of. Okay, so here, this Kubernetes uh, will take minimum of eight hours. So here, Kubernetes is nothing but in Docker containers, we will be dealing with a concept called as Docker Swarm, which is a cluster orchestration and cluster management tool. Very important once again, Docker Swarm. The equivalent of Docker Swarm with respect to this uh, Google developer is Kubernetes, okay? So Docker, in Docker, we have several things. In Docker, we will be dealing with the uh, uh, Docker uh, basics, these are all the things that we are going to deal Docker basics. Okay, in this case, we will be dealing with the Docker architecture. We will be dealing with the Docker installation, how to install Docker, and what are all the prerequisites. And then we are going to deal about this Docker images. how to launch container from images, Docker containers. Okay, so you can imagine if you have an idea of AWS Cloud, you can imagine uh, the images as an AMA, container as an instance, okay? The same thing we will discuss about the difference between uh, how to launch the instance using Docker and what is the difference between this uh, VMware virtualization and cloud instance and Docker container, okay? And then we will be dealing with the uh, Docker networking. We will be dealing with the linking Docker containers, multiple containers. We will be dealing with the Docker files. So to automate the task, we will be dealing with the Docker Swarm. Okay. So very important topic, the Docker Swarm. Okay. So these are all the some of the things that we are then then Docker repository, how to set Docker repositories. Okay, Docker networking, yes, Docker networking, linking containers, Docker files, Docker swarm. Okay. So here this uh, Docker course itself, uh, several people are charging around 15 to 20,000 rupees for this Docker course alone. That's an important thing. We also cover Kubernetes. So totally the Docker plus Kubernetes may run into 20 to 22 hours, okay? So after that we have two things will be left out. One is Ansible, the configuration management tool, and another one is Nagio, the monitoring tool, okay? So this is the agenda. This Ansible will need around 7 to 8 hours. This Nagio will need around 2 hours of our session, okay? Totally 6 to 10 hours. Then this corresponds to 20 hours of Docker and content. 30 hours of sessions has been left out. Okay. So here, very, very important. You please uh, make a note. So you want to be very comfortable with Docker and container Kubernetes. So by doing all the practicals that we are discussing here. Okay. So today, the agenda for today's session, we are going to start with what is Docker and how it differs from virtualization. 
why is this much of importance for docker and its architecture okay you are already aware of the concept of virtualization what is virtualization virtualization is a concept using which you can create multiple virtual machines okay so uh, on a single physical machines is an every virtual machine okay this is our physical server on top of a physical server you will be having some uh, virtualization software so the software that we we make use of it okay <clears throat> is vm virtualization software like a vm where we can have virtual box we can have microsoft hyper v we have citrix etc there are several uh, softwares okay so the this virtualization softwares uh, used to create multiple virtual machines we call these as a hypervisor in terms of technical hypervisor we call this software as hypervisor using which we can create multiple virtual machines when creating the virtual machine what we need to do we need to allocate to cpu 4 gb of ram memory and 100 gb of hard disk for virtual machine work and for virtual machine to imagine let me take this scenario virtual machine to we have 3 cpu 3 gb of ram memory and 50 gb of hard disk okay and you have another machine that we make it as virtual machine 3 for virtual machine 3 you have a once again 2 cpu and 2 gb of ram memory and with 50 gb of storage okay assume that 2 2 4 6 6 plus 3 yeah. so it is a let me imagine that it is a eight core processor okay eight core microprocessor with 16 gb of ram memory so here in this concept of virtualization each vm may have its own operating system we may have a ubuntu here on top of it we may have a rtl database server the application may be a different and here you can have a sent os yes yeah. and you can have a mail server on top of it and here you can have a even windows me okay 2016 and on top of it you can configure a dns server okay so each and every virtual machine so can be installed with different operating system and different application software each machine is independent of one another each and every machine is independent of one another that means so i can able to start this virtual machine one without affecting the virtual machine two and virtual machine three i can start and stop the machine without where comes the hardware cpu ram memory and hard disk here you can take this hardware from the physical server assume that the physical server is a 8 core microprocessor 16 gb of ram with 1000 gb hard disk okay on top of the physical server <coughs> you may have operating system as you may have a windows 10 operating system this is called as host operating system we already discussed this theory called host operating system and on top of it we will be having this hypervisor okay it may be a, any one of the hypervisor and on top of it we can create multiple virtual machine and operating system here on top of virtual machine has been termed as guest operating systems okay so these are all the things that we discussed so in terms of virtualization let me take one scenario here how many cores that we have eight cores how many cores that we have assigned so we have eight uh, microprocessor and we have 16 gb of ram memory here for this uh, virtual machine one i assigned how many microprocessor virtual machine one virtual machine two and virtual machine three at the time of creating the virtual machine i need to allocate processor two processor for vm1 three processor for vm2 and for uh, two processor for vm3 virtual machine 3 okay here you have virtual machine 3 here you have two cpu and two gb of ram okay so totally 2 plus 2 seven has been assigned we have left out with one remaining that one thing can be used by your physical server why it need it need to run the operating system post operating system and also it need to run the virtualization software for that assume that one microprocessor is dedicated for that the remaining seven has been allocated to this three virtual machines the second in terms of ram memory so it is assumed that once again we have 3 gb 4 gb 
for virtual machine one we have 4 gb of ram virtual machine for 3 gb of ram and virtual machine uh, 3 we have 2 gb of ram totally 9 gb of ram we are left out with remaining uh, okay 7 gb assume that that this machine occupies uh, 2 gb of ram your physical server okay therefore we have left out with one microprocessor and uh, almost 5 gb of ram so this is the here if you want to run all the virtual machines okay what is the concept behind that the hardware which is uh, utilized by the virtual machine should be less than or equal to the total available hardware that is the remaining available hardware okay here i have uh, only one microprocessor and 5 gb of ram as a free hardware currently available available so i want to launch uh, another virtual machine I want to launch a virtual machine 4. Okay, this virtual machine 4 needs once again two microprocessor and it needs let me take a 6 GB of RAM memory. Okay, this is the requirement. I am going to launch a Hadoop here, so therefore I need a more RAM memory here. Okay, Hadoop Spark, so it's in memory data processing framework. So two microprocessor. How many GB of RAM is currently available with me? So after assigning this uh, 9 for all the 3 VMs and 2 for our host machine, we have 11 occupied, 16 minus 11, I have 5 GB of RAM memory and I have one microprocessor currently available. But my requirement for virtual machine 4 is I need a 2 microprocessor and 6 GB of RAM memory. This is the scenario. Okay, here, if you go for this virtualization, I can't able to run the virtual machine 4 along with the 3 virtual machines. Also because the machine is lagging in the resources. Okay, the requirement is 2, 6, whereas the availability is 1 microprocessor and 5 GB. Let me assume a scenario. This is the thing that is associated with virtualization. Okay, at the time of creation of the virtual machine itself, we need to allocate the resources. Okay that resources couldn't be taken back. For example, let me take a scenario. The application that is mail server currently running is only consuming two microprocessor and two GB of RAM currently. It, it has one microprocessor and one GB of RAM always free. But once it is allocated to this virtual machine too, we could be able to get back this one CPU, one GB of RAM that is available if it is virtualization cards. Here in case of Docker, okay, in case of Docker, we call this virtual machine as a container. Okay, we call this as a container. So here the container at the time of launching of the container, okay, here you no need to allocate the resources. In the above similar scenario, assume that if you have a container C1, C2, C3, and C4. I want to launch the C4. In this case, how much of uh, available resources here? I have two CPU and one GB of RAM that can be taken and it can be combined with these uh, existing available resources. And now it will now six micro, two microprocessor and six GB of RAM, which is available, which can be assigned to the container four. Okay, that is in our terminology in terms of the virtualization, my virtual machine 4. Okay, the thing I want to let you convey here is the resource allocation in case of virtualization is a static. That means at the time of creation of the virtual machines, we need to allocate the resources. Okay, once the resource is allocated, whether the resources is utilized or not, we couldn't get back the resources. Okay, even though it is ideal, it will be remains there. Whereas in case of uh, doctors and containers, here the resource allocation will be dynamic with respect to the current requirement. What it is currently required, that resources alone will be consumed. Okay, it won't be any underutilized resources. That is the difference, major difference between the docker and virtualization. Okay, so here we can hundred percent. Say we can say that the resources can be utilized in an optimum manner if we go for the concept of Docker and container. Okay, compared to that of virtualization. Virtualization is an advantage when when we compare this uh, virtualization with respect to physical server, it is advantageous. It makes use of the resource utilization in an optimum manner. 
But with respect to Docker, Docker was found to be advantageous because of the following reason. We have another reason. I will give another point to discuss. So if you have any doubt with respect to this, you please uh, let me know. This conference will now be recorded. This is one of the major difference. Okay, the next difference here is here. For example, let me take it. This is your physical server. On top of it, as if you have virtualization software. Then imagine that for your understanding, we have Ubuntu version 18 installed on physical server. We have created virtual machine one, virtual machine two, and virtual machine three, three virtual machines. Here it is installed with Ubuntu. Here it is installed with the CentOS. It contains Red Bit Ubuntu. Okay, here the Ubuntu operating system, if you install, it occupies minimum of 3 GB of hard disk. Okay, and it took this installation took minimum of 30 minutes to complete. Okay, this is the concept associated with this. Uh, if you install, uh, from in a physical server or if you install in a virtual machine minimum it took 30 minutes and 3 gb of storage space so if it is a vm vm1 vm2 and vm3 here imagine that your physical server is uh, having a ubuntu as its base operating system you know the difference between ubuntu and centos all are linux linux is the open source okay you can download the code you can share the code Based upon that, several people download the code and they add some new features on top of it to make uh, the end user interaction easier and administration easier. And they release under their own name, Ubuntu, Scent, Red Hat. Like we have several, these are all called distributions of Linux. So in these distributions, almost 80% are common. What are all the things that is present in uh, Linux uh, source code? Will all these features will be present here also? Only 15 to 20 percentage it differs. Okay, the Ubuntu and differs by CentOS based upon some 15 to 20 percentage. The core kernel we call this as a kernel. The core component of your operating system, the kernel will be same for all the things. Here, if it is a VM, what we need to do here, if you install Ubuntu, once again here itself it occupies 3 GB. If you install send, imagine send occupies 3.2 GB. Here Ubuntu occupies 3 GB. So you you want to install in your virtual machine also, even though you have in your underlying physical server. Whereas in case of Docker and container, if it is a container, here no need to install this Ubuntu. Okay, here this container can share the operating system. Okay, the kernel, core kernel from the underlying physical server. Okay, the container one, if it need Ubuntu, it can take this operating system from the underlying physical server. What it can do, it can get this uh, code. On top of it, only some additional binaries and some additional libraries, which is not present, that alone will be configured here with respect to our application requirement. Whereas the once again, the CentOS, we have, if it is a container C2, the container will take this uh, core kernel, which is almost covering 80%. Okay, it will uh, share it uh, from the physical server. You no need to install it in a separately. The remaining 20%, the associated binaries and libraries alone will be installed here. So, because of this reason, it is called as a lightweight component. Lightweight in sense, it occupies less storage space. You no need to install all the above the components in separately in this container. It can able to share the underlying kernel from the physical server so that uh, here if you start a launch a container, we can able to launch it uh, within a certain seconds. Okay, you no need to do installation and so on. What it contains only the binaries and libraries associated with the applications requirement alone will be present. This is called as lightweight because of the reason. What is the advantage? One, it occupies less space, less the hard disk space. The second thing, being it is already shared, already running, it can make use of it. You can able to start the container 
very very quicker manner so no need to wait for okay you can immediately configure your container within a second that is the another advantage okay going for this virtualization yes clear these are all benefits of going for the virtualization sorry docker sun containers make a note of Hmm, sir, so if uh, physical server is uh, Windows and uh, the virtual machine, if you uh, you want to install Ubuntu, means uh, that time what uh, we need to install Ubuntu. What? What is your question? With the physical server uh, OS is uh, uh, Windows, yeah, right? Yes. So, so what uh, here in case of Windows, you support only on Windows 10 Enterprise Edition. I mean Windows 2016 server only. Here, even though if it is a uh, Windows, here this two version, Windows 10 and Windows uh, 2016, will have some Linux kernel also uh, as a building. So that even though if it is the underlying server is uh, Windows, even if you launch Ubuntu, it can able to share the kernel. It support only on Windows 10 Enterprise and Windows 2016. So it is irrespective of operating system. You don't need to worry about the operating system here. This is in the current version of that. Okay, sir. Okay, so you don't need to bother about OS. And it's supporting Windows with the following uh, operating system. It won't have a support the Windows 10 normal basic version, Windows 8, Windows 7. I don't support for that. Only the two versions of Windows alone will be support. Please make a note. Okay, so with respect to this architecture, these are all the major two differences. With respect to this architecture as been concerned, so we have Docker repositories. We have public repository or we can configure our own private repository. So the public repository hub.docker.com. Similar to GitHub, you need to have a code credentials. Hub.docker.com, the private is local to your organization. Okay, so which is maintained by the Docker community. Hub.docker.com, maintained by the Docker community. So here we need to configure a Docker server where. The Docker daemon will be running. We need to configure a Docker server where the Docker daemons will be running. So under the Docker server, you can have Docker images. And you have, based upon the images, that you, you can launch multiple containers. And the end user can interact by using a Docker client. The user interaction with the Docker server is through Docker client. The, whenever user issues any command, okay, so the command it may be okay, Docker run or Docker build. Okay, we will be discussing shortly about this command, Docker build. Okay, so any command, uh, Docker, if you want to download an image, you need to go for uh, okay, uh, Docker run command, it will uh, download the image. Okay. So if not else, uh, you can make use of all the Docker command. What are all the Docker command that you make use of it is through the Docker client. Docker pull image, okay? It will uh, download the image. Docker run also download. We will discuss all the command the user will uh, submit to the Docker client. 
the Docker client in turn connect with the Docker server and the Docker demands will listen the request. Docker run, for example, the command is log full Ubuntu. I am looking for uh, Ubuntu. So whenever uh, the Docker client issues the command, the Docker demand will receive and it will check whether we have any Ubuntu images that it is present under its uh, Docker server. Okay, all the currently downloaded images will be maintained. Based upon the image, you can run multiple containers. All the containers will be running in the pod. It will check whether we have Ubuntu image. First time, the Ubuntu image won't be present under the image repository, which we configure on Docker server. Therefore, the demo not it will do. It will check into the private repository. Private repository here is managed by the concerned organization in its local premises. If it is present in the private repository, it will download, take it and it will be placed in the image location of Docker server. Okay. If not, it will connect to the public repository through internet. Okay. So then it will download the image from the public repository into the images. Okay. This is the process that it is associated with how the user can interact with the Docker server and how the Docker server can connect with the repository with respect to user's requirement. Kindly make a note of this architecture. Here, the images, you can imagine images as a AMA. In AWS Cloud, we have, a, if you want to launch a Ubuntu, you want to use a Ubuntu AMA. AMA, we call this as a bundled instance, okay? Bundled, everything has been pre-compiled. Similarly, in case of Docker images, we have binaries, libraries, and operating systems, and all the utilities associated with your application will be bundled as the image. This is equal to AMI. So using AMI, what do you will do? Based upon AMI, you will be launch a EC2 instance. Okay, you will be launching an instance. The similar to instance, using Docker image, you can launch container. Okay, the container is nothing but an analogy that you can consider as an instance. Okay, the Docker image is nothing but with respect to Docker and with respect to AWS. With is is the equivalent to AMI. Please make a note. Okay, so the AMI is equivalent to a image and an instance is equivalent to a container. Yes, and you know the difference between the container and the instance. This is the flow associated with the user interaction with the Docker server and the Docker server's further interaction with the Docker repositories to download the needed things. Please make a note. This is architectural perspective. Take it. I will give you one or two minutes to clarify. This conference will now be recorded. The message is Sham. Is it clear? Hey, yes, sir. Next, we are going to discuss about this installation. The installation is uh, very simple. Okay, you can uh, install in AWS, create a Ubuntu 80 or Ubuntu 16 based instance. Using AWS, okay. And then first command sudo apt hyphen get update. So it updates the repository. The second command sudo apt hyphen get install docker.io. You can install either using this method. Or you can make to solve another method by which you can get the Docker image from the repository and you can do installation. You just make a note. This is the one way that you can install. The second way is that you can download it from a particular site. Okay, I will let you know the site.
very simple insulation of tracker is very simple another way you get it from the following getta.docker.com okay you can follow any one of the way you can go to the blog getta.docker.com from getta.docker.com so you can uh, okay can you get.docker.com okay you can find the docker install script so what do you need to do so this is the script that you need to run okay the script is made for quick and easy install you want to curl the following thing okay it will download as a script file get iphone docker and you can start this by using sketch get iphone docker dot sketch okay this is the way by which you can install i will let you know so how to do installation okay so these are all the two ways by which you can install docker let me connect with my aws credentials and do installation you can do it in your own virtual machine okay once again in our vm itself you can install docker or you can install in aws www dot aws dot go to ec2 you can go to instance to launch a instance you can take either ubuntu 16 or 18 i am going to take ubuntu so the micro one cpu and one memory is enough configure instance detail number of instance is one this is your docker demo add storage 8 gb is enough add attack let i add attack name okay so docker server configure security group the security group need to permit ssh okay let me make it as docker underscore security group so you want to add a rule ssh from anywhere and to all traffic these are all the two things okay all traffic from anywhere we be on launch launch you want to give the key we can make use of a key devops 6 to launch it up instance here this is a ubuntu instance where i am going to configure docker
until it reconnect to the machine and do the installation of the Login as Ubuntu. So before installing anything, it is a best practice to go for sudo apt hyphen get update iPhone way without asking anything it will in update so you already connected with the, the get dot the docker dot com get dot docker dot com here you can find the script the script is meant for quick and easy install okay so here you can simply take curl then get docker.com under which you need to have a control C. So before that, your custom working directory is home Ubuntu LS doesn't contain anything. Right click. Okay, it will download the docker.sh. LS you can find the docker.sh file. Then you want to start by simply sh get docker.sh. Control C. Now it starts uh, Docker. It will execute this uh, script for installation. Now Docker is installed. Okay, to make a verification, Docker space iPhone iPhone version. Docker version. If you want to execute any Docker commands, you need to be a root user. Therefore, sudo su stands for sys user iPhone. Okay, it will take you to the root user. Now we can find uh, the user who am I. Now shows you that you are currently the root user. That sudo is the privilege su can for switch user iphone will take you from the normal dollar prompt now you can find the prompt is a hash prompt so with respect to here the linux has been concerned there are three types of users okay which we already discussed one is root user another who is having all the privileges the second type of user is system user, which is nothing but the background process which is running, the background demo which is running has been termed as system user. And third type of user here is end user or normal user. Okay, the so root user and then system user. root user, the system user, the end user or otherwise called as normal user. Okay, the root user prompt is hash, the normal user prompt is dollar. We can find initially you are in a dollar prompt. When you use this command, sudo su stands for switch user iPhone, it will take you to the, the root user. You can make a verification by typing u hamai. It shows that the current user. If you type for who space am space i, it will show you which user that you got logged in. At the time of logged in, you how you logged in. Who space am space i. It will give you, okay, Ubuntu. This is the user you logged in. But currently, who am I without any space will give you the current user, okay, the root user. You want to be a root user to execute all the Docker commands. Please make a note of it. You want to be a root user to execute all the Docker related commands. Now let me execute the commands. Okay, just take it. Yes. 
सर उबुंडू इसे सिस्टम है सर और एंडर नॉर्मल है सर एंड यूजर नॉर्मल है सर इसे जेनरिक टर्म जेनेस उबुंडू इसे द यूजर नेम द यूजर नेम ओन बी एंड नॉर्मल इट मे बी अरामन इट मे बी उबुंडू इट मे बी जेनेस ओके दोस यूजर्स आर कॉल्ड नॉर्मल जेनरिक जनरली कॉल्ड एस एंड यूजर आर नॉर्मल यूज रूट यूजर इज द एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर ओके here the root user user name is root he is the administrator of linux he can do all the action the system users are nothing but demons demons are nothing but the background process which is running on the system which is beyond our control the root user and system user is beyond our control we can't do any activity okay it is beyond our control parents you can do all the control activity on the end or normal user ओके सर नाउ यू कैन इफ यू दिस कमांड लेट बी क्लियर to find what are the images currently present you can type docker images it will list you what are all the images that it is present currently in our uh, docker server there is no image okay therefore it shows that the docker images as a empty entity to list a container docker ps okay so docker ps so it will list all the currently running containers okay it will list all the currently running containers can type the command sudo apt hyphen get um, update sudo apt hyphen get install docker dot io or get docker dot sketch it will take you to the prompt so sudo su hyphen will take you to the root user Okay, then only you can execute Docker. Docker, let me save it. Save it. Docker class one. Install and basics. Save. Okay. So, so now to list the image, Docker image. It will. Uh, list all the images similarly to so list your container docker ps okay we will list all the currently running containers okay it won't uh, list the stopped container if you want to list the stopped container also docker ps hyphen a okay will list both running as well as stopped containers okay please make a note docker ps will list you only the currently running container it won't list the stopped container whereas if you give option ps hyphen okay it will give more details 
to download an image. Okay, so please make a note. Let me start with the image associate. If you want to search whether the image is present or not, the command is docker search s e a r c h search image name. Okay. Example docker s e a r c h search Ubuntu. It will this command need a internet connection. Okay, this command need a internet connection. Okay, it will uh, search the repository, the public repository, and will list the concerned images. Okay, Docker search Ubuntu. So to Docker image. Okay, so or you can issue another command called docker currently docker image ls both the command okay will give you detail docker ps will list all the currently running containers Okay, please make a note. So now you have uh, no image, Docker images, Docker PS, and Docker PS hyphen A also does not have any container. Also because it is empty. Now the repository is empty. Okay, you can search if you want any image. Docker search. For example, you are looking for Ubuntu. It will connect with the Docker Hub and it will list all the images. We have this much of images. Okay. Ubuntu, Debian, Stars, okay. There are several uh, Ubuntu which is uh, shared under the Docker. Okay, you want to take the concerned version with the more number of stars, okay, which is the official image. You can find there is a tag called official. This is the official image. For example, if you are looking for uh, Jenkins, okay, you can issue Docker says Jenkins. It will uh, List you all the Jenkins related images. You have this much of uh, Jenkins, Docker Jenkins, Swarm Ready Fabric Jenkins agent. Okay, you want to search the image which is official. Okay, so if you want, uh, for example, Docker Hadoop, Docker search. If you want a uh, send OS, yes. let me make it as Docker search send. It will uh, give you the official send OS. Yes. Everything you want Docker Ansible, Docker search. The C A R C H. For example, Maven, Docker search Maven, it will list all the images associated with the Maven. Is clear? You can immediately download and you can launch the container within a second. That is the advantage. Okay. So now let me download it. Now you don't have anything here. Currently, your present working directory is a root directory and Docker images, nothing has been listed. Either you can issue Docker images or Docker image ls, but the some will result in the same thing. To download an image, there are two ways by which you can download the image. One is you can issue a Docker full image name or you can issue a Docker run command. You can issue both the commands, okay? Either a Docker run command or a Docker full. So Docker full you want to specify the image name, send, or docker full Ubuntu, what it will do, okay, issue the command from the docker client, the docker client connect with the server where docker dev1 is running, that is your docker server, and the docker server will look into the repository, the docker server will maintain two repository, one is the private repository, okay, if not yes, Okay, it will connect the Docker server, will contact this private repository. This is the repository. If it is present, it will download the image and place it in the client machine. If not, the Docker server will connect to the public repository. This is our public Docker repository. The public Docker repository is hub.docker.com. Okay, it will connect to this hub.docker.com. It will download the image into the client machine. Okay. 
So it will download the image into the private repository. From there, it will get take a copy and paste with the print image. I will show you the public repository of your Docker. Okay. You can find the public repository hub.docker.com. You need a credential. You want to create a, your account credentials. For doing uh, practicals, you need to create a credentials. Okay. You want you can sign in. Here you can uh, find out the search for the images. Here, if you want the uh, sent OS, you can search sent. It will list all the sent OS. Okay, what are all the sent OS that is present? So this is the latest version which is uploaded. If you want the uh, Ubuntu, you can type anything that you want. Ubuntu, it will give you what are all the Ubuntu images, okay, which is maintained. Ubuntu, Upstart, Nero, Puppet, Ubuntu, all the variants will be listed. Okay, please make a note. If you want a uh, Hadoop, okay, you can simply click on Hadoop. In the Hadoop images, Hadoop slave, Hadoop name node, Hadoop data node, everything will be listed. Hadoop node manager. If you want the Java, you can type Java. All the Java associated images, okay, will be listed. Java, OpenJDK, Tomcat, okay, Java with CoffDB. If you want uh, MongoDB, so you issue MongoDB. The MongoDB associated images will be listed. Mongo, Mongo Express, OrientDB. So anything that you want. If you want uh, Oracle, the Oracle. Uh, Docker certified Oracle database images will be listed. Okay, you can find anything. So Microsoft, if you want a SQL server, a SQL server is listed. Ready? Okay, HTTP. So you, you can uh, connect into the Docker hub .docker .com to make a verification. Now. I am going to download an image. How I can download? I can do it in two ways. One is I can use docker pull command or I can use docker run command. The another way of downloading image is docker run iPhone IT, the image name, example Ubuntu. iPhone I stands for interactive. Terminal T stands for terminal. What it does? Docker run is used to launch a container from the given image. If you have already an image present, for example, if you have already a Ubuntu image present, what this command Docker run will do? It will launch a container. Okay, it will launch a container, container C1 with Ubuntu as its operating system. And it got connected with the container. Now you, you are into the container, Docker container. This iPhone IT option will take you to the Docker container. Okay, it will connect with this. If you issue this uh, Docker pull Ubuntu, what happened here is just it will download the image. If it won't uh, get connected with the image, it won't launch a container. It will just download the image. Okay, if you want to launch an image, you want to launch an image. So if you want to launch a container by using Docker run. I will make a verification. Okay, please make a note. The difference between Docker run and Docker pull. To download a Docker image, the command is Docker pull image. Example Docker pull Ubuntu. Okay. Or Docker run iPhone IT Ubuntu. iPhone IT stands for Interactive Terminal. Okay. Will download and gets connected to the container will download the image launch a container 
and get connected to the container. Okay, so we will uh, show both of them. So Docker images, Docker image LS, Docker image nothing. Okay, let the Docker full Ubuntu. Now you can find default tag, it is connecting and uh, pulling from the public repository. Downloaded the new images of Ubuntu, that is latest you can find. Okay, so LS won't list anything. Docker images will list you that you have a Ubuntu image, latest image, which is uh, created two days before, whose size is 64.2 MB. Okay, this is the way now you are currently under the present, you can find you are currently under the present working directory root. Docker PS, it will list the container. Okay, there is no container. PS hyphen A. Also, there is no container. So, if you want to launch a container, you, you want to issue a Docker run hyphen IT. Okay, so you give the image name Ubuntu. What it will do? Now it will create a container. Now you can find that. So, got connected with root as the container id this is your container id you just uh, look into the difference initially you have root as the ip address of the machine after using doctor and ip it got connected with root as the container id now you are under the container so person working directory source you are under the root ls source uh, here this is your container okay open uh, another terminal duplicate session This is your duplicate session. Okay. So you can find Docker PS. Now it will list your okay. Voice of permission sudo su hyphen Docker PS. Now we can find you have a container with the container ID has been launched based upon the Ubuntu image. Okay, it is created about a minute ago and the status is up and running. Okay, is it clear? What I did here? We have now connected with the container. Okay, so now the container is being running. That is the reason why if I issue Docker PS, it will list. Docker PS hyphen A also lists this. If you want to get more information, Docker inspect the container ID. You can issue the container ID. Docker inspect the container ID will give you more details on container. Okay, it will give all the details. What is its IP address, network setting, to which bridge is connected to, which bridge port is running. This is the container's IP address 172 something 0 0.0. It is standard with the bridge network. We will have in depth discussion on this bridge network. And in terms of uh, the volume associated with this uh, container, okay, so here to so which volume it is associated. So here the data drive, or everything, all the how much of the CPU, how much of current CPU utilized, all the statistics, uh, okay, you can get if you go for the following command. Doctor inspect container ID. Please make a note. To get more details on container, to get more details on the container, Doctor inspect container ID. Okay, will give you more details on container. Now, what I am going to do? I am going to come out of it. Currently, I am in the container. Simply exit will take you out of the container. Okay. Now, if you type Docker PS, it won't list. The container won't be list. If you type Docker PS hyphen A, it will list the container. Now we can find the exit status is exited nine seconds ago. So, whereas in another screen, now just now uh, we have issued the Docker PS command. Okay. So in another screen, here to Docker PS, I, it won't list anything. Docker PS 
hyphen a will list you the container okay this is our container id based upon the ubuntu and it is created three minutes ago it is exited that is seven seconds ago this is the way by which you can uh, now docker images will list you you have an uh, image ubuntu okay you can also directly docker run iphone it send to it now, now unable to find the image okay docker error response full access denied repository does not exist i may require docker login okay so you need to go for a docker log docker now you can find the image name is send to os docker run iphone it send to os it will download the image and you got connected with the image you can find you that this is the image id that is this downloader and you got connected with the image okay your present work directory shows that you are connected who am i it shows that you are a root user with this image now if you type uh, yeah, with, you are now into the docker okay you are now into the centos here it won't list for example if you type docker version it uh, it won't list any version here was it because currently you are connected to the sent container centos container where we have not installed docker docker is installed on the amazon machine only okay on the amazon machine so now you can make a verification into this uh, window okay now the initial command docker ps is a empty it does not have any container id docker ps hyphen a alone listed that the container based on ubuntu has been created now i will issue the same thing docker ps now it will show you have uh, sent to us which is running docker ps hyphen a it will list both sent to us as well as ubuntu is it clear what we are doing here ps hyphen a the option a will list you not only the currently running container it also lists the stopped container ubuntu container being it is a stopped container you can find the status exited whereas the sent to us which is currently running whose status is up this is the way by which you can issue uh, uh, docker run command or docker pull command to connect with this uh, public repository and to download the needed images now the container is stopped is it the ubuntu container is stopped okay so we, we can start the container or you can start the container anything that you can do please make a note of all this one sir or or query sir chinna query sir yeah இப்ப நம்ம இன்ட்ரோடக்ஷன்ல பார்த்தது வந்து டாக்கர் வந்து ஃபர்ஸ்ட் பார்த்தது வந்து விர்ச்சுவலைசேஷன் இதுல பார்த்தோம் அது வந்து ஓஎஸ் லெவல்ல பண்றோம் இது ஹைப்பர்வைசர்னு தேவையில்லை அது ஒன்று ஓகே கிளியர் ரெண்டாவது பார்த்தீங்கன்னா டாக்கரோட யூஸ் வந்து கிரியேட்டிங் அண்ட் டிப்ளாயிங் அந்த பேக்கேஜ் பண்ணி இன்ஸ்டால் பண்றது அதுதான் சார் மேஜர் யூஸ் you can download the needed software you can uh, and store it in your repository ipana mainge the container nu paathukittu idella vandu and package thana sir application package which needs to be deployed container ingiradhu enna adu container ingiradhu modhal moonu thara na solirken la container ingiradhu ungaloda instance புரியுதா ரீசன் என்ன 
எனக்கு <laughs> 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 okay okay that is the condition imposed by doctor now you can find doctor ps evening a uh, you can also assign a name okay to your container ninga docker container create pannum bodhe what do you can do you can assign a name to your container how you can assign a name so ninga edhume kudukala appadina what happen here is so name won't be assigned by default you can give several options adhu mel idu paathu you can get the logs docker logs from the following thing okay now you come out of it exit so docker ninga logs kudutittu docker now ps hyphen a will show you the container id you can get the logs by issuing the following command docker logs the container id it will give all the logs associated with the container இதான் கண்டெய்னர் ஐடி ஓகே இப்ப நாவ் யூ ஹாவ் docker ps you don't have any running container docker ps hyphen a you have two containers which is stopped docker images you have two images to start the container docker start container id the container which is stopped can be started for example i am going to start the container by giving docker start the container id now the container got started now we can find the docker ps will list you the current container yes before the docker ps uh, is empty why is it because the container is in stopped state docker ps if and a will list the both the containers okay with the image sent and open to now to start the container docker start container id after that if you issue docker ps it shows that the current container id which is a currently running container okay so once again to stop the container the command is similar to the docker start you want to issue docker stop to start and stop the container docker stop container id it will stop the container if you issue docker ps it won't list now docker ps <coughs> hyphen a will list just please make a note to start and stop a container docker start 
and doctor stop his thing come on to start stop a container command is docker stop container id and docker stop container id okay so verify the same command docker ps if you want to start the container with a name you can issue hyphen hyphen name For example, okay, to remove the container, first uh, Docker images, we have images to remove image, Docker RMI, remove image to ima remove image name. You can type Ubuntu, it will remove the image. Unable to remove repository, also because the container is using the image. Okay, so therefore what we need to do, since we have a, a running container, Docker, PS, is having a container okay so what we need to do first we want to stop the container docker ps a a container uh, is using this ubuntu therefore docker stop the container id okay the container is stopped okay to so remove a container docker remove container id so remove a container, docker container, container id. Now docker ps, you don't list the container, docker ps hyphen a. Now we can find we have only send to OS alone will be listed. The Ubuntu container is removed. The Ubuntu container is removed. Therefore it is not listed. But you have Ubuntu image. You know the difference. Docker images will let you Ubuntu. So remove the image. Also docker rmi. Okay, Ubuntu. Now the Ubuntu image has been removed. Okay, Docker. Now images Ubuntu won't be listed. If you want to remove an image, the command is Docker RMI image name. To remove uh, image Docker RMI image name. Remove a container. Docker RM container name. Okay. These are all the ways by which you can remove a Docker image and Docker container. Now you can find uh, you won't have a image. Okay. Clear the screen. Docker image will show you you have Docker images. Now you have only sent to OS, okay? Docker PS. Unto you don't have a Ubuntu. Once again, if you want Docker, simply run iPhone iPhone name. Okay, let me make it as my Ubuntu. And then Docker run iPhone IT. What is the name? So image name is Ubuntu. Now you can find. Once again, being it is uh, dropped, uh, unable to find the image locally. This is the first step. It connects with the local repository. And being it is not present here, it is uh, pulling from the public repository. And it, uh, it forms a container. Being uh, issued uh, iPhone IT, it launches a container based upon the image and it got connected with the container. Currently, this is the container to which it got connected. The name is assigned as my Ubuntu. Initially, it assigned name by itself. Now, if you go to the other screen, okay. Now, if you type here, Docker, okay. 
images. Now you can find you have a Ubuntu and CentOS now Docker PS. Now you can find a container. Okay, under the name my Ubuntu, I assigned a name by issuing an internet name for the container. Container which is running here. Okay, to stop the container, what is the command? You simply exit out of the container, it will stop the container. Okay, now go to this and run the command once again, Docker PS, nothing will be listed. Whereas Docker PS hyphen A, it will list the container uh, with the already stopped. Okay. This is the name of my Ubuntu is the container which is exited. This is the way by which you can either uh, download using Docker pull or Docker run. If you want to download the image and at the same time, if you want to launch the container, the command is Docker run. Okay, you can connect intermediately and you can work with that. Similarly, you can so remove a container Docker RM container ID to remove image Docker RM image name. So these are all some of the basic commands that it is associated to view the logs, okay, to get more information, so on, so on. Yes, clear? Now you can exit the logout. Okay, now uh, you are you, you are got out of the Docker. Okay, exit it will take you to the following thing. Simply exit, you come out. Now you come out of the system. Okay, this is the way by which you need to install Docker. Okay, so after action, instant state, you can stop it. Yes, clear what we have discussed today? Arun, Dinesh, Rajesh, Sham, any doubt? Now please. Yeah. Please no, no, no. No, no. Yeah. Uh, Sir, uh, yes. I have a doubt. Hold on. If we remove the container, we can remove the container. So, at the time, we can remove the images. So, the images can be the same as the retain. Even though the container is removed. If you remove the container, you can remove the images from the still and the images are still there. If you remove the image, you can remove the image. If you remove the image, you can remove the image. If you remove the image, you can remove the image. If you remove the image, you can remove the image. Okay. 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 I know the way Ubuntu and the use for one application. Ning a valil of putting up Nina, Unger wrote a container, Ning a valil of it. They marry I and a container, less than container launch for Nikla. Only the base reference image on Nunya, another remove on Matan. Okay, so if Pella container may remove another of my images remove on Murima. Container local reference money more comes on. Container or container or just the container remove on our image remove on the error. And the image of paste for me, a lot of container and night on the image remove on the other. Okay, sir. Or to pull a remove on the remove on the container on the other night. Okay, sir. Or to pull a remove on the other night. Remove on the other night. Remove on the other night. Even though if any one container is using an image, then if you want to terminate the image, if you and along with the container, then you want to use a forcible option, remove forcibly. I will let you know. Okay. By default, it won't permit you to remove. Mm, okay. Sam sir, do you have any doubt? Oh, okay, sir. I'm clear, sir. Okay, thank you. We meet again on next uh, Saturday. Next Saturday and Sunday, we can able to complete the Docker maximum. Okay, we will be having only Swam and the Arupo. Swam with any other discussion. Next two and a half hours, two and a half hours, Docker and the Murichite. Before starting Swam, we will uh, complete our Jenkins. Okay.